when we were walking around in a bookstore, we saw all these references of blood curdling fear and blood curdling frightening uh, scream. And then we thought, well, uh, is this really the case? Would this really be true? So if you look in the literature, there's a lot of uh, talking about blood curdling fear and it goes back uh, ages, even uh, thousands of years. Now we think that theory is that old. It was already described in the Aeneid of Virgil. My whole frame shook in a palsy of chilly fear and my veins were ice bound. And we thought it might be nice to really explore if, if this phrase blood, blood curdling uh, truly curdles the blood, which is not only a scientific, but also a very cool question to answer. It's almost Christmas now. As you can see here, we're sailing in the city of Leiden, and it's a very nice scenery around here. And that might wonder you if, if the city of Leiden is, is very peaceful, but it gets a bit dodgy sometimes at night. So we're now entering one of the most creepiest places in the city of Leiden. The Leiden tunnels are certainly spooky and Banner and Luca wondered if feelings of fear arouse more in us than just the well-known fight or flight reaction. We'll be always wondering if there's something that will be jumping you inside this tunnel, something that will frighten you this much that your blood will curdle. Could we also have evolved a mechanism to get our bodies ready for bloody injury? So we're both working in the field of uh, venous thrombosis, which composes of deep vein thrombosis and, and pulmonary embolism. So I'm working in the field of uh, thrombosis after patients get a plaster cast of the lower extremity, for example. And although that risk is very low, it's still present, and we obviously want to reduce this risk. <gasps> To study the effects of fear, they decided to bring their knowledge of blood clotting into the world of the cinema. In this study, we took two groups of participants, and first we only told them that they were going to watch a movie, and then one week afterwards would watch another movie. Uh, we gaan vandaag een film kijken. Um, zo gaan we één voor één uh, bloed afnemen uh, voor de film. Dan gaan we een film kijken, uh, en dan direct na de film gaan we nog een keer bloed afnemen. Oké, okay, dan gaan we nu beginnen met de eerste bloedafname. Uh, we beginnen hier. So they didn't know what kind of movie it was going to be, but the first group we first showed that a non-frightening but more of an educational movie. The final job of the day, tasting the rosé the pink champagne that'll be next to go into the bottle. It's a very, very dull educational movie. And then we took blood right after, again. And then one week later, on the exact same day of the week, we showed them a very frightening movie. Right before and right after, we took blood again. And for uh, the other group, we did the exact same thing, only we re reversed the movie order. So we had a very, very dull educational movie. There aren't too many grapes this year, but the best of them are really good. And a frightening horror movie. <laughs> and both circumstances were completely the same. So the only difference was the exposure, which was the frightening or the educational movie. So we used the visual analog fear scale for every participant to score the, the fearfulness of, of the movies. Champagne film. No. Ja. Totaal geen angst. Nee, zeker niet. Ik ga absoluut op nul uh, invullen. Ja. <laughs> ja, en nu die ander. Ja, die vond ik echt een stuk enger. Ik ga voor een acht. Ja. Ja, ja, ik denk een 7. Ik vond hem wel echt eng, ja. Ah! 
and most participants scored a zero after watching um, the movie A Year in Champagne. The scary movie, most participants um, scored there around a seven, right? One participant yes. scored an eight. Ah! So we took the blood samples to the lab and then we centrifuged them. So we separated the plasma from the other uh, matter that's inside the blood. In the plasma you can determine all the coagulant factors. So you can see if there's an increased or perhaps decreased coagulation activity as a result of these movies. We measured factor 8, which tells us something about the activation of the coagulation system. <laughs> so we were sitting behind the desk doing the statistics and we were both surprised and super excited mm -hmm. because we immediately saw a very, very clear result. We immediately called um, Willem, he's one of the senior researchers involved in this project. He stood up and walked to the computer to check if we did everything sure. correct. Yeah. And it turned out that factor 8 increased a lot more after seeing the hor horrifying movie than after seeing the dull movie. Prachtig, geweldig. Gefeliciteerd. So this research does show that fear can get our blood all ready to curdle. When you're really, really scared, then the amygdala, a small part of the brain, is activated and then all your nerve will become on alert. The experience of fear actually causes your body to prepare for blood loss in extremely fearful situations. Ah!